Day 6 of the NBA playoffs just ended. Let's talk about it. I think we have to start off with this game between the 76ers and the uh, Brooklyn Nets. This is a game that just was full of flagrants and uncommon fouls that you normally wouldn't see. We'll talk about those real quick. So the first one happened about like two minutes into the game. Uh, if I remember right, uh, Nick Claxton finished like a dunk over Embiid and stepped over Embiid because he was laying on the ground. And Embiid tried to neuter this man, this man Nick, Nick Claxton, bro. He like tr tried to just obliterate his nuts on the ground. He tried to do like a Draymond Green like nut kick on the ground. And he got a flagrant one when it really should have been a flagrant two, if I'm going to be honest. He was laying on the ground. He wound up, he wound up his, his leg and went in for those nuts, man. Um, and then Claxton picked up a technical foul right there. That'll be important to the later plot of this story. And then later, in like the third quarter, James Harden was driving against, I forget who, one of the nets. He was driving against one of the nets. And... Uh, the defender, I forget who it is, got hit, um, like, around the nuts, too. So, really, the Sixers were trying to neuter the whole Nets team. He got hit a little, um, under the nut, or by the nuts. It didn't really look like it was intentional, though, at all, when Joel Embiid was clearly intentional, and, and uh, James Harden got a flagrant one. Or, no, not, he didn't get a flagrant one. He got a flagrant two. He got ejected from the game which I think was kind of an overreaction. I get why they did it, but I think it was the wrong call. If anyone should have got a flagrant two, it was in beat at the very beginning. But James Harden is out of the game, and then Nick Claxton finishes a dunk over Embiid again and taunts him again, so he gets a technical foul and gets ejected from the game. Also, Joel Embiid got knocked to the floor like four or five different times in this matchup. So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he had some kind of injury for the next couple games. He went back to the locker room early, came back out, was in the game, was hobbling a little bit, then got knocked to the floor again, and again, and again. And it just, it didn't look good. It looked like something, something was hurting, man. So, I wouldn't be surprised if he was out for the rest of the series, maybe even into the second series a little bit. And James Harden got hurt, too. He fell weird or bumped bones or, uh, like, bump knees with one of the Nets, I forget who, someone that was guarding him, but not a great day if you're the Sixers fans or Sixers, because your two, like, your stars that you need for this playoff run have, might have just got hurt. If you were the Nets, you really wanted to steal this game. It was the ideal game to steal. Nicholas Claxton was having a really good game. Mikael Bridges was doing Mikael Bridges things. And they were up um, late in the fourth, but they kind of just choked. Some of that had to do with Nicholas Claxton being ejected, which if I was a teammate on the Nets, I would be mad because you really got ejected for taunting when we really needed you in the last couple minutes. Now, the last couple minutes they were leading, thanks to, like, Mikhail Bridges and Nicholas Claxton mostly. Um, but... On the other side of the floor with the Sixers on offense, Joel Embiid really couldn't get anything. He was being doubled the whole game. And with James Harden being ejected on probably a bad ejection, who else stepped up except Tyrese Maxey? Superstar in the making, Tyrese Maxey. Uh, Maxey ended on 25, 3-3 and three on 58% shooting. And uh, when James Harden got ejected, he took over like ball handling duties. And he had a couple timely shots in the fourth quarter when they needed him most. Other notable for, uh, performances for the Sixers were um, DeAnthony Melton, I think it was, with like some crazy monster jams. You could tell he was just kind of angry, and he just like threw it down with such aggression. Um, but no one else really kind of did anything crazy. They just played normal. Notable players for the Nets. Were like Mikael Bridges, you had your Spencer Dinwiddie's, who had 30 points, and you had your um, Nick Claxton's, and that was kind. Of, I'm. I think that the Nets are going to get swept, man. 
this was the game to steal and they let it slip through their fingers. Next up we have this Clippers game and looking at this Clippers game originally you would probably think that it would be a blowout in the Suns favor when it really wasn't. The, the Suns had a comfortable lead the whole game but at the end of the fourth quarter it, it really came down to to crunch time. Chris Paul, the the Suns had like a five point lead and Chris Paul got sent to the free throw line with like a minute 30 left and he missed both of them and they had like one chance and Terrence Mann missed his three pointer and you could tell when he missed that three pointer that all the life and all the momentum building behind the Clippers was just like gone in an instant. Now you think with no Kawhi or no Paul George, it must have been Russell Westbrook that kept them in this game, which it was part Russell Westbrook, but it was mostly, well not mostly, but partly due to Norman Powell. Norman Powell had the game of his life in this random game three. Norman Powell had 42 points, five rebounds, five rebounds, three assists on 65% shooting. Westbrook had 30 points, 8 rebounds, and 12 assists on 47%. So, they were like the ones that were keeping the Clippers in this. And if Kawhi or Paul George played in this game, they probably would have won. Because they were really close to winning, man. They they were just like 5 points away from winning. But to make sure that they didn't win was Devin Booker, who also had another monster game after his last one. With 45 points, six boards, and three uh, three assists, three steals, and three blocks on 62% shooting. Devin Booker has been really good on the defensive end. I don't know if it's always been like this, or if he's like turned it on for the playoffs or what. But he has just been really locked in on the defensive end. One also interesting thing is Ty Lu had this like ultra small ball lineup they were calling it micro ball on the podcast not the podcast on um the broadcast they had with their announcers and everything where the tallest person in there was uh terrence mann um and for some reason deandre ayton was in the game too and deandre ayton like he was always hovering around the free throw line he refused to get in the block and like back someone down and do a layup I know, like, his, the finesse is kind of his game, but sometimes you, you've just got to go strong and just get this layup, get this dunk over someone who's, like, eight inches smaller than you. Lastly, we got the Sacramento King-Golden State Warriors game. And uh, now the um, the Golden State Warriors finally remembered that they were the Golden State Warriors with four rings on their finger, as Golden State, or uh, as Clay Thompson would let you know. Um... We'll start off with the Warriors here. Curry had a massive 36 points, six um, six boards, and three assists on 48% shooting. Looney, uh, Kavon Looney had four points, um, 20 boards, and nine assists, doing his best Dennis Rodman impression. Now these are amazing stats to get in this must-win game. If they didn't win this game, it was pretty much a guaranteed. A Sacramento win as no one has ever come back three up um, now the the defense looked more tenacious on the inside they weren't given anything easy to uh, Sabonis uh, even without Draymond or GP2 uh, Gary Payton the second Gary the Payton the second was sick for this game and obviously Draymond was suspended for stepping on Sabonis this game now I think the more interesting thing is just the Kings shot horribly in this game. Out of their 47 attempted three-pointers, they made 11 of them. And nobody particularly had the hot hand. I believe Malik Monk ended with like four points. Um, I'm not really sure if that's the Golden State defense or if that's just the shooters having an off night, not playing in their own building or whatever. Maybe it's the, like, the curse of San Francisco or something. Um, but I was not expecting that from the Kings, who have like one of the best offenses, probably the best offense in the whole league, to just come out really struggling like that. 
and the Warriors didn't with Curry's stat line. Um, Andrew Wiggins had a solid game. Uh, Clay Thompson and Jordan Poole chipped in some threes, but it was mostly uh, Curry and Looney. The Warrior or the Kings could not get a rebound on the defensive end because Dennis Rodman was in the game. Oh, I meant Kavon Looney. They were in the game, and they were just eating up everything. Um, yeah, so that's really all I got to say about tonight. Comment, let me know what you think about any of these games and the playoffs in general. Leave a comment, I'll reply. Might even be featured in video, we'll see. Um, yeah, until tomorrow, I'm, see you then.